Thank you. There's no more time for another question. We're going to move to further debate. Now, recognize the member for Kingston and the Island. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, it's a pleasure to rise today to speak to Bill 71. Uh, my riding of Kingston and the Islands has a mine. And, but more importantly, it also has the Queen's University Mining Engineering Department, which is the largest uh, in the world. And I just want to acknowledge uh, the work that they do to support the mining industry. Uh, we, the Liberal Caucus, support the long-term success of the mining industry in Ontario and the well-paying jobs it brings, the economic development. This bill, Bill 71, uh, uh, tries to allow mines to, to open faster, but to me the bill seems rushed. It falls short in several areas and may put at risk the reputation of Ontario's mining industry. Uh, we believe that the areas where the bill falls short can be fixed in committee, so we'll be voting in favour of the bill at second reading, but to have the Liberal Caucus's support at third reading, several things need to be done at the committee stage, which I'd like to address now. First of all, we need support from Indigenous communities if mining is to be successful. The Conservative government did not consult Indigenous communities before the bill was tabled. I believe that we must pause and do that at the committee stage. Let me elaborate a, a bit on that. This came out during a ministerial briefing uh, yesterday, and it is really important to make sure that Indigenous communities have, have buy-in. If we're sloppy about Indigenous consultation, we're really just hurting the mining industry. And it really seems to me that this, there's some indication here that the bill was rushed. Uh, this bill was tabled on the very last day that it could be tabled uh, before the uh, Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada meeting uh, that's going on right now. And so the question arises in my mind, is it a coincidence uh, that they tabled on the very last day and didn't have time, somehow they didn't have time uh, to do the uh, Indigenous consultation? So I think it'd be really important for the committee to pause and to hear testimony, what I understand is that the ministry is uh, explaining the bill to Indigenous uh, groups right now. And it would be very important, I think, to hear what they have to think, what they have to say about, the, uh, about this bill, and to take any appropriate action at committee stage. Um, we need young people to consider mining as uh, where their career might lie. There's a labor shortage in mining. So one of the things we can do to help that along is to continue to improve uh, the reputation in the mining industry in the eyes of young people entering the workforce. We should be able to say, and we often can say, that mining leaves things better than they were before. So there's a part of the, this bill, Bill 71, that deals with the recovery of minerals from tailings and other mine waste. Um, in that part of the bill, we should be very careful not to allow loopholes. In fact, I believe that there is a legal loophole where either public health and safety or the environment could be worse after recovery operations from tailing or waste. And there's a very simple change that can be made in Section 18 of the bill. There's a phrase in Section 18 of the bill which should be changed. Let me read uh, what it says right now. It says, the condition of the land with respect to one or both of public health and safety or the environment following the remediation is comparable to or better than it was before the recovery. What I believe it should say is we should strike the words one or. And if the condition of the land is, is going to be comparable to what it was before, then the condition of land with respect to both uh, public health and safety and the environment uh, following the remediation should be comparable or better. Because if you use one or, it means the other one could be worse. I and mean, I believe that's a legal loophole that should be corrected in committee. Furthermore, this, this bill uses the language comparable to or better. In the current legislation, there's a different word that's used. It's 
It's the word improved. So clearly we're, we're backing off. Instead of requiring these recovery operations to improve the condition of the land or the water, uh, we're settling for comparable. And so there's a problem here, which is I think mining companies and, and the mining industry wants to say, we leave the land in a better condition than it was before. And if we're selling for comparable, um, well, it's not worse, but you're not encouraging young people to feel good about uh, considering a career in, in mining. Uh, let me also say that I believe that the word comparable, which is not defined in the legislation, uh, we were told in the ministerial briefing that th this word comparable would be articulated in the regulations, and I believe that the, that word should be defined in the regulations before third reading. We need the public to be confident that after a mine closes, the land and water will be in an overall better state than before. In the long run, this confidence supports the mining industry and the prosperity it can bring. Currently, ministry officials conduct the technical review, the technical certification of mine closure plans. So this bill moves that role from the ministry to uh, so-called qualified persons. And the problem is that currently the term qualified persons refers to geologists and mining engineers who assess ore deposits in order to protect investors. Now, for mine closures, we need completely different skills. Uh, we need completely different knowledge to certify mine closure plans. Maybe we'll need biologists. Maybe we'll need environmental scientists or geochemists. And I believe that the regulations should specify this before third reading. One simple thing you could do is just call them something else. Instead of the people who are used to writing reports to protect investors, call them something else. Call them mine closure qualified uh, persons and then specify in the regulations exactly what qualifications they need to have. And I know that uh, this is not a hard thing to do because there's a mining rehabilitation code and you can just look in that. Uh, to see what sort of uh, things need to be uh, considered when you close a mine and use that to, um, to explain what qualifications the qualified persons who uh, certify mine closure plans, what qualifications they need to have. A final point is that the people who sort of, the qualified persons who can certify mine closure plans, I would hope that they are uh, in different firms. They're often in private firms. I would hope that they're in different firms from the qualified persons who write reports for mining companies uh, to protect uh, investors who, to, who, who write reports on how much ore there is, how much could be ex extracted. Um, and the reason is there's a moral hazard. There's a moral hazard if you are, on the one hand, uh, somebody who's paid by a mining company to write a report um, for investors on how much ore there might be in a deposit and how much could be recovered. If you're, if you're in the same firm, in the same company, uh, and you are, you're, you are a qualified person to uh, certify mine closure plans, there's a conflict of interest that we have to avoid. So I would hope that the, that the firms that are employed are separate. I mean, I think there's no evidence that this is, that the government's plan is going to improve the, uh, the quality of the technical review that is currently done by the ministry, but uh, if they are going to move it over into uh, qualified persons, I would want to make sure that these qualified persons don't have a conflict of interest. And let me just say that um, these qualified persons uh, for mine closure, if they're in a private firm, they probably don't have the financial resources to stand behind all of the uh, economic consequences of their certification should something go wrong. And that could be bad for the mining company itself. Um, a final point, let me say that the minister taking over the responsibilities of the director of mine rehab rehabilitation, uh, that has the, the risk that, that political pressure will uh, come into play when it 
when the minister is deciding, instead of the director of mine, mining, mine rehabilitation, when the minister is deciding whether or not to accept a mine closure plan or to accept a deferral of a mine closure plan, which is something else that this, this bill um, uh, allows. So to summarize, let me, let me say this. Le caucus libéral appuie la réussite à long terme de l'industrie minière en Ontario, ainsi que les emplois bien rémunérés qu'elle offre. Ce projet de loi tente de permettre aux mines d'ouvrir plus rapidement, mais il semble précipité, il laisse beaucoup à désirer et il peut mettre en péril la réputation de l'industrie minière de l'Ontario. You know, I think it's okay to take the time to get this bill right so that mines can be built in a first-class way and without delay. There's no need to rush this bill. It's like taking your time and getting your stance right and taking your time on the backswing uh, when you play golf so that your shot goes straight and stays out of trouble. Thank you, Madam Speaker.